Welcome to As I Live and Grieve, a podcast that tells the truth about how hard this is. We're glad you joined us today. We know how hard it is to lose someone you love and how well-intentioned friends and family try so hard to comfort us. We created this podcast to provide you with comfort, knowledge, and support. We are grief advocates, not professionals, not licensed therapists. We are you. Hi, everyone, and welcome back today to As I Live in Grief. So excited to have you all back. Hope everybody's been well and staying healthy. Great guest today, and this is going to be a very interesting and very important conversation. My guest today is Tony Lynch. Hey, Tony, welcome. How are you doing today, Kathy? Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Before we get started on our topic, which is about men and grief and how they grieve differently than women and how we might help them, would you just share with our listeners a little bit of your background, please? Uh, Yes. So I have a nonprofit based around men and grief. It's called Memories of Us, and uh, we offer grief support to men. So primarily what we do is we provide space for men to be able to talk and um, go over the issues that are really going on with them at their loss and um, to be able to walk with them as they go through the process of dealing with their mental health, dealing with trauma, but dealing with the initial losses that we that we go through. Yeah, it, it's very, very important um, with anyone who's grieving to be able to listen. I think that's probably the most important piece of advice I could give anyone who wants to support someone who's grieving is just be with them and listen. Now you mentioned holding space or sharing space with them. Can you kind of clarify what do you mean by that term? So I, I do offer virtual groups for men to be able to come and express themselves openly and, and be validated in their feelings, but also be around other men who have walked through it because men, when we're by ourselves, we like to put up this macho, uh, facade, you know, like nothing hurts us. Like, you know, we always right. have to man up and things like that. Well, in this space, we drop all of that and we allow ourselves to be open um, to talk, to be able to um, feel those things, right? Um, but also be surrounded by good, strong other men that have walked that path and said, hey, you know what? There's a whole nother side um, to to manhood and it's through understanding um, who we truly are as as men wholeheartedly, you know, um, emotions, all of those things. And there's no room for, um, you can't, in, in that space, you can't neglect your emotions because it's, you know, we kind of, we kind of watch each other, right? And uh, so, yeah, that's the biggest thing that we do is we show up and we sit there with them and um, we walk with the men. Okay, so that space then is just being there with them and Mm -hmm. kind of giving them what they need, whether it's support, a pat on the back, a hug, or just listening, Yes, whatever they need. Okay, and I have to say, to be fair, women probably just kind of feed that whole image of men being the stronger ones. Yes. We want men to be strong because so many times we count on them Mm -hmm. to help us or to support us. So it's very special when a man can feel comfortable enough with a member of the opposite sex that they can kind of drop their guard a little bit. How might we help them to do that around us, to kind of drop that persona? The the first thing is is whenever whenever you have a man in your life and that they're struggling, don't put expectations, don't put your expectations on them. Because when you do that, you know, you're you're saying, okay. You know, I see that you're grieving, but I expect you to be here at this moment. Right. So and when when men get put in a situation like that, we push back, we close down, we don't want to talk. Right. And it doesn't matter who you are. It can be your family member. It can be, your, you know, your kids or whoever you do that to us. Mm-hmm. We, we push back. We're like, hey, don't put don't try to put me in a place um, where it's unfamiliar. And that's the one thing I always try to remind women when it comes down to grief. It's unfamiliar territory for men. So allow us that space to be able to adjust adjust to that new that new norm that's going on. Adjust to what's going on. Understand what's going on. Have more mm-hmm. um empathy towards us, you know, and not say, you know, um biggest the biggest thing I always hear, uh, man up. 
you know, man up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Suck it up, buttercup, and all those good things that yeah. people like to say to us men out there. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because a lot of times when you do that, you get, we get combative and we, we tend to we tend to venture off on our own and um, figure out things to help us cope with this so we don't have to deal with the expectations. Because right. the more you expect me to be somewhere, the more I'm going to pretend to be there. You, you yeah. see what I'm saying? And so it's easier for yeah. me to pretend to do that. Um, than to than to um, explain than to have to try to explain to to you what's going on. So being open to that, you know, um, being open to having that conversation with us as well, you know, that's 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 hugely important. But not rush the conversation. You know, if you open up the door, a lot of times we'll we'll poke at it a little bit, and depending on where we're at, uh, more than likely we'll come and talk to you. You know, and uh, yeah. being able to have that conversation, but that has to be a lot of understanding on both halves. Right, right. So somehow we as women need to express the fact that we're open to having a man share with us mm-hmm. how they feel, mm-hmm. what's going on, you know. Um, and once you kind of offer that invitation, I'm guessing we have to be very patient because it may not happen immediately. It's it's not going to happen. I can tell you that right now. Now you may get one that, you know, that responds to it uh, immediately, but for the most part, majority of men, you have to be patient with this. This is a new territory for us and no one ever taught us about this. Right. And mm-hmm. so with that, it's just like, it's just like the first time you go in to read, you got to learn how to formulate the words first. So that's mm-hmm. what it's like. It's like we're having right. to formulate those words because it's hard for a man to say, I'm hurting. It's hard for a man to say, I need someone. So, and that's hugely important. You know, understanding those basics right there, just have a little patience with this, you know? And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if you see us, if you see us just sitting there with our head down, it's okay to come over and be like, hey, you know, I'm here. Don't try to press the conversation though. It's it's only going to backfire because when we're sitting there, we're trying to think of how can I say this and still um, sound like I'm the man of the household without mm-hmm. um, without feeling like I'm failing my family or my friends right. for that matter. You right. know, right? Yeah, it, I would imagine it's especially important um, if you're in a relationship with a man and you yourself, the woman are grieving as well because mm-hmm. sometimes we sometimes we just can't put the brakes on our emotions right you know it, it's just that we, that we just can't do it yeah. and you know i tend to stuff things as well but you have to i think try to find the appropriate time to just stop and acknowledge the fact that perhaps you're both grieving mm. you know i realize it acknowledge that you both grieve differently it's going to look different for each of you and your internal feelings you may or may not want to share. Right. But you still have to, I think, recognize that some alone time may be necessary or don't push mm-hmm. for feelings. Don't don't try to do that because you may wind up pushing someone away. Yes. How does how does something, a conversation in a relationship like that, how does a conversation go if say the the woman is bringing up fun memories of the person who's gone. Does that help or does that make it worse for men? Um, Depending on the end. So it depends on the individual and how they perceive the message that you're trying to come across. Now, when, when you're, like you said before, you know, when it's come down to grief, those emotions are there. And most times men will kind of suppress it. So when we suppress, we're putting up a wall. And it's okay to come in and, you know, say, hey, you know, remember that time with such and such and we did these things? One or two things are going to happen when you do that. A man is going to look at you and go, I don't want to talk about it right now. Okay. Or they're going to say, yeah, I do remember that. And they may be kind of standoffish trying to see where their conversation right. is going. Because we already right. expect, you know, to, people to try to get us to open up, right? Uh, yeah. So we already expect that. So that's what we're doing when we're when we're looking, going, yeah, you know, that like I remember those times. We're trying to say if you're going to push us, 
or if you're gonna mm -hmm. if you're gonna just keep sharing those memories and allow me to interact with you okay. and everything like okay. that. So again, you got to take it step by step. You know, there's no easy way to have the conversations, and I and I really wish there was. But mm -hmm. honestly, it's a lot of patience. It's a lot of having. I would like to say a lot of a lot of open love for us and being able to receive that love back, but in the in our masculine energy. Right. You know, we let us let us let us hold on to that masculine energy and let us allow us the right. time to be able to walk with you. And that's what I mean when when it comes down to men and women on both sides. We just need to know how to show up. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just show up and know how to yeah. visit with each other. Yeah, and right. that can solve a lot of things when it comes down to the misunderstanding about how men and women grieve. Because once you can show up with each other, you realize there's a whole lot of things that we do the same. Mm -hmm. It's just learning how to um, learning how to see it. We do a lot of things the mm -hmm. same, you know, and um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you just gotta have, you just gotta be able to visit with that individual. Right, right. That that makes a whole lot of sense. Now, I, I might be hearing something that you really don't mean, but it sounds to me like there's a certain level of trust that the man has to have in yes. the woman who is trying to engage in conversation. Right. You have to trust that they're not trying to set you up. Ex and, that they're not trying to that. make you go somewhere you're not ready uh -huh. to go. And yeah, no, I, I definitely did mean that. So you read it, you read it correctly. Okay. You know, All there's right. a certain yeah, amount of good. trust. It, so when it comes down to it, once we get into, into this unfamiliar territory, you know, automatically, right. if you have a man in your life and he's, you know, he fits your interpretation of what a man is, that man has gone through mm -hmm. things in his life. Men, we, we, right. that's what we do. We have to go through these things in life in order to become the person, but we all do. And it's right. taking that knowledge when you're in these vulnerable spots and going, okay, this man is not used to this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your approach, you have to, you have to have a very diverse approach when it, when it comes to that. Right. And uh, also, you know, you have to understand that the man that's standing in front of you is not the man that you, that you know, everything has changed right. up here. There's a whole lot of things going on in our head. Like, what do I do now? You know, is my family? We spend more time worried about our family than we do ourselves. Yes. And so when you have someone that does that, you have to sometimes you have to tell that man to back off a little bit on the things that he's mm -hmm. doing to allow him space because you want to be able to re-earn that trust again. Right. Because we don't know. Right. We don't know. You know, yeah. we don't we don't know what you're even though you, you've been married for 16 years. It takes that one thing and, it, and your words can hurt. Your words can hurt. And, it, you know, because you, we don't know. This might be the time that you that you use this against me. You know, this, um, you know, what, what are you going to tell me that what are you going to tell me that's going to help me? For the most part. Right. You know, is yeah. is um, are your intentions well, well towards me? So, right. of course, we're going to be standoffish. We have to be standoffish. Until we're until we feel safe enough here yeah. in our home. Yeah, safe, feeling safe. I right. think that's a lot of it too. I mean, it's just like you know, a lot of women, well, a lot of people. You know, they the stereotypical male does not show emotion, right? Especially any tender emotion publicly. Mm -hmm. You know, they they don't they don't cry. They you know things like that. That's the stereotype. But in truth. Everyone should be free enough to express that emotion mm -hmm. regardless, you know. So it's just that stereotype that's out there, I think, that really hurts to begin with. That's that's where you start. Yeah, that's so where you start. So somehow you have to get past you have to get past that. And hopefully in a relationship you can manage to do that. Now, when I say and I, you know, I titled this Do Men Grieve Differently, I know they do because everybody grieves differently. Right. But other than that whole thing about needing to feel safe, and generally they feel safer with other men mm -hmm. than they would with women, okay, are there other facets of the grief journey that are different for men as well? Does it take them longer? Is it more intense? Does it, you know, different things like that? Yes, in, in certain ways, depending on the depending on man. Uh, when I went through, and I still go through my grieving cycle, in the beginning, it was very intense. There was a lot of, intense emotions that I did I had never you know expressed 
allow myself to feel. There is the way that I handled it. I was more aggressive during my during my grieving process. So when we think about the differences, our the way that we grieve, since we don't understand or are very unfamiliar with these emotions and things like that, we become very standoffish. We become we we isolate ourselves. We become very aggressive. We begin to you know um, do certain things to cope um, either. Stand, stand at work forever, right? You know, you want to work 80 hours to 100 hours a week mm-hmm. to not have to right. deal with it. Or in right. some cases, people like to self-medicate. More Men are more aggressive in their self-medication because, you know, we take everything to the extreme because that's the way that we feel. We don't want to have to address what we're going through. And plus, when you get told your whole life, you know, this is not the way it's supposed to be, we still carry that with us. And during that process, that's how it's expressed. So what you may see as a person making reckless decisions, um, very aggressive in how they start their daily routines after that, or you know, um, certain people that they start hanging around with, that man is grieving. That man is grieving and he's looking for someone that he can connect with. A lot of times we don't find that. Um, so what we do when we start to self-medicate, those be the people that we actually attach ourselves to because you're giving me escape from my reality. Right. right? And deep down inside, I know that you don't understand, but in that moment that I'm self-medicating with you, we understand the whole world together. But once that, once that high is gone, once that thrill is gone, we got to go back in there because you like the connection. So you have to pay attention to those things as well. And men need to be very aware of it too, because it's so easy to do. It's it is really easy to do. That pain that you feel, depending on the loss, most losses when people go to the extreme um, are very deep. And that I could talk about losing a child. You know, that pain there mm-hmm. is something I wouldn't wish on anyone. If you have a good relationship with your with your um, parents or your siblings, and you lose one of them, that relationship can take a toll on you, you know, so you're going to react to it in different ways, you know, Um, but more than likely we go to alcohol because it's a quick fix to the pain to numb it. And then from there, if we don't get help, we escalate. We we tend to go do uh, harder things, but most of all, you know, look at how we react to it. Because for me, I made bad decisions and I lost everything. Mm-hmm. I lost everything. And uh, so it put me on the streets homeless. I, um, it was being tired of being sick and tired of the pain. And then eventually mm-hmm. I started planning out my own suicide. So I started looking at that aspect too. Why is that so high? Well, it's from the things right. that we experience that we can't express. So that's what I mean. When it comes down to men and women, we have to be careful how we push each other. Right. You know, because right. uh, more than likely that man is on the verge of falling over. And it's not going to take much to push them. If you give off the indication that you don't care in any sort of way, uh-huh. we we take it just like that. You don't care about me. So okay. why do I need to be right. here? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. So again, let me, let me check what I'm hearing and what I'm thinking. Um, we talked about how men need a safe place mm-hmm. or a safe environment or a safe friend or something right. to feel comfortable in their grief. That will help them in their grief journey. Mm -hmm. If they don't have that in a relationship or something, they're going to try to find their safe space or create Mm -hmm. their safe space. And they may not necessarily, because they're grieving, make good decisions. But that's all they're really doing is looking for their safe space where they will feel safe so that they can continue to go through the grieving process in their own way. Yes. Is that, is that correct? That's exactly what it is. Okay. We, we're okay. constantly right. trying okay. to create that because no one ever told us that it was, that it was okay, okay. Um, to have a space for us to be able to talk. So we right. internalize it. We have to keep it. We have to keep it inside, right? Because the less you see, the more you can, uh-huh. uh, you know, in my mind, if I'm going through it, the less you see, the, the less chance that you have of hurting. Right. You know, so I go into protective mode. I go into, you know what, if I don't let you in, you can't hurt me. And I've had people I've had um, in relationship. I've had that happen to me before where, you know, um, I had just lost my son, my my significant other at the time. 
probably about three months after losing him, she, her, her reply to me was, it's been three months. You need to move past it. Mm-hmm. And I went, have you ever lost a child before? No, but it couldn't be that bad. Wow. Couldn't be that it bad. It couldn't be that oh. bad. I said, well, I tell you what, um, you have a kid, right? You have grandkids. She goes, yeah. I said, imagine someone taking that away from you. She goes, well, it's never happened, so I can't imagine that. I said, but I have. And I said, and I think this is the last conversation that we're going to have. I don't, yeah. I don't want to talk to you anymore. And she looked at me oh as if gosh. I was wrong. And I and I told her, I said, I'm not wrong. You have to understand. I just lost my pride and I just lost my world. You lost your everything. Yeah, my everything. Yeah. Everything that I was a part. And this is what you yeah. tell me? Okay, well, I'll tell you what. You go ahead and uh, you keep that. Uh. And um, I'm going to figure this thing out. Um, oh, my goodness. And that's when I realized the, the differences between we grieve. And, you know, yeah. um, then I listen yeah. to people's conversations between men and women because I want to learn. Right. I want to learn how to be more proficient of how, of how I should exactly. love. Right. But I also yeah. don't want to give women the, the, um, some sucky advice that don't work. I want to give them something yeah. that they can <laughs> take, you know, and be able to right. apply it during their walk as they're walking with their right. men. Right. Um, so yeah. it's it's a lot yeah. of that, you know, um, that you have to take into consideration. You got to remember, men, the, the things that we go through, we don't address. And so right. you do that to us, then we tend to address it, but not in the way that you think. Well, sure. And a lot of it is a reaction uh-huh. of something you've been told or something you've gathered from through body language or, or an experience. That's another or thing like as that. well. Yeah. And so where... Where I think that most women who are grieving, they would tend to just sit by themselves on the sofa and either, you know, watch mindless TV or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. They tend, I don't believe, and this is my opinion only, I don't think women would be as aggressive about trying to find a safe place. You know, they might look for a bereavement group or something like that, but if those things don't come kind of easy to them, they're more apt to just sit on the couch and suffer in silence, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Whereas it sounds to me like men really, because they're men, really need a safe place because of all of the pressures of culture and society placed on them to be strong. Mm-hmm. So they need to be able to try to get back to where they can comfortably be strong. Does that make sense? Yeah. Comfortably be strong and comfortably be themselves. Right. Um, Again. Know. Yeah. It, yeah. Kind of that return to some state of normalcy. Right. You know? Whereas women, again, would just sit on the couch and wait for it to be over. And I mean, that's, that's a very loose opinion. I, I'm sorry. Sorry, women. But that's kind of <laughs> how I that's kind of how I feel. You know, I no, remember I uh, after I lost my husband. That once I got through all of the, you know, the paperwork and all those things that I had to do, there were days that all I did was sit on the couch yeah. because I had lost myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have, I had taken care of him for eight months um, as he went through cancer, brain cancer. So I had given up, every, I had given up work, I had given up friendships, my my normal routine of you know, going to the Y or going out to lunch with friends or that, that I gave everything up mm-hmm. because everything I had to do was to be there for him, to take him for lab work or whatever. I did not aggressively try to find anybody to talk to. I just sat by myself. Right. Until one day I got to the point, well, you know, I'm just not going to live like this anymore. And then I moved forward. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not everybody does that. Right. Not everybody does that. So it's very interesting to me to hear what I feel like men look for a safe place so that they can go on. It it almost sounds to me, Tony, like men know they need to do something mm-hmm. to kind of get back to themselves. Yes. They They know and they have that motivation. And if they don't have someone around them, whether it's a a parent or a sibling or a wife or significant other, if they don't have somebody around like that, then they're going to look for some safe place that they can go get their feelings out and move on. Right. Um, So that's very, very interesting to me. 
death has always been hard to talk about right. for anybody. That's why you do what you do and, and why I do this podcast. Exactly. For that same reason, because we want to change that. Exactly. We want to normalize the conversations around it. Exactly. Because it's something that if you have an eye experience, you will experience at some point. It's inevitable. And so in order to better understand how we go through these things and develop these different tools, um, right. things like that, we have to we have to have these conversations uh -huh. to better support each other, you know, right. and going back to, you know, when you're saying that most women would go to the couch and lay on the couch and things like that. Yeah. You know why men don't do that? Because women spend most of the times when you are in a relationship with someone, your home is your safe space. Right. We as men, we we look at home. This is home. This is where I lay my head, but this is not where I spend most of my time. I'm usually at work. Right. So home is not a safe space. It's a space where I come to rest, right? But depending on the out the, the environment in the household, right. men won't sit around. We'll go tinker around with toys and you know all of yeah. these different things, maybe find ourselves at a gym. Oh yeah, that's one thing you have to watch too. Most men, we have right. a lot of aggression in us. So we go to the gym right. and then we start to look for things like boxing or MMA, karate and things like that. And we right. dove ourselves into that. The more valid the sport, um, the activity, the better we feel because now we feel that right. we can do something, right? right? So that's that's another thing to be aware of too. Women do, right. this is your safe space because you created it. And right. then when we, give, when we give that over to you, it's like, oh, well, make uh -huh. this mine, right? That's why we yeah. stay out of yeah. it. We want you to be yeah. happy. This house is so for you to feel comfortable in, right? right. Um, this is just a place that I pay for. Now, it'd be a difference yeah. if, you know, we're building it together and, um, you know, it becomes both our safe place. Then maybe I may feel comfortable with laying on the couch right. and, you know, not doing anything. But you leave exactly. it to my own demise, I'm going to be ripping and running because I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to have to deal yeah. with everything else that comes with that loss. You know, the mental health, right. the depression, the anxiety. I don't want to deal with those things. Right. I don't want to deal with the right. unbearable pain um, that I can't that I can't fathom going right. through. You know, so right. of course I I do that. We do things to distract us all the time, and uh, then we mm -hmm. use home as a place to just go rest. Right. You know, it's, right. it's familiar. Those things, yeah. people never take those things into account. Yeah. Yeah. Well, OK, so we're kind of winding down. I have one last question and then I'm going to turn the mic over to you so you can tell everybody about your uh, Facebook group, your um, the service again you provide. You, you know, that'll be your time. But one last question. Yes. If you had to say to me, a female. Kathy, this is the one thing I want you to know about how to interact with a man who is grieving. What would you tell me? One thing I can't stop um, saying, be patient with them. Okay. Be patient with them. Um, yeah. Because, again, like I mentioned before, it's unfamiliar territory. You know, and uh, I've never, they've never been here before. We, most of us have never been here before. So be patient until okay. we figure it out. You know, and walk okay. with us as we figure it out. And we'd be okay. more susceptible to open up to you, to talk to you. Okay. That's great advice. And, you know, we've actually covered how men grieve differently. We've also given some great relationship advice <laughs> in these few minutes, haven't we? Haven't we? Uh, we've talked about trust and safe environment and everything. It kind of goes hand in hand. And, uh, it, it really does. It goes it really hand does. in hand. So much, so much person, is dependent on where you're starting from in your relationship. Right. If you have a solid relationship to begin with, then chances are you can get through this. Exactly. If you're not on solid ground in your relationship, it could be a little dicier if both of you are grieving. So yeah, yeah we've done pretty well. Okay. I'm going to turn the mic over to you. Tell everybody about the Facebook group that you have and who it's intended to help. Tell them if you want to about any other exciting news, conferences, uh, your own Facebook page, or your own podcast. Tell everybody about that. Your turn. If you guys like podcasts where you, um, you'd like to hear inspiring stories of grief and loss from some amazing people, you guys can check me out on YouTube, which is Memories of Us Podcast, and on any of your favorite um, streaming platforms as well. Up and coming things. We I just started a new podcast probably about a month ago. It's called Grief Let's Talk About It, which is a live discussion panel. And 
the audience can call in and well not call in but they can interact with us ask us questions about the topics that we have and so that goes live every two weeks we got another one coming up on the temp so you guys are out there you want to join in by all means we're going to be talking about loving yourself while while you're grieving which is going to be a great discussion we got yeah. women from across the world so you guys are going to get it from all ends you know and uh, right. and it's going to be it's going to be fun also we got a conference coming up the global grief conference 2023 is coming up in april and that's going to be another live event and we're going to have grief workers from across the world just showcasing their niche giving education helping people connecting with people um, also, if you're a man that's struggling, you can find me on Facebook, which is Memories of Us Facebook, and uh, which is a private group where us men come together and we can hold space for each other, but be able to support one another as well. And so, yeah, a lot of great things. You're a busy man. I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I have some insider information on the conference that's coming up. It's still set for next spring, right? Yes. There'll be more information coming out. But already there are over a hundred people that are in line to present. So this is great content. And the other exciting piece is that conference is free. Yes. It's free. It's free to people who want to attend and listen to sessions and it's free to presenters. So y'all, you better get in touch with Tony. That's all I can say. Um, it, it will serve you well in the long run. Okay, sadly, Tony, our time has come to an end. I appreciate so much not only you giving your time to sit here and chat with me, but to chat so candidly. Um, it's something that, you know, let's face it, not everyone will do and not every man would do. So I really appreciate hearing from a man how men grieve differently, so much more than I do from a therapist. So Thank you so much for that, <laughs> because it comes from practical knowledge as well as personal experience. Right. And that's where so. we got to make the combination. We got to be able to bring that book knowledge with the lived experience Absolutely. and be able to do better. You know, at least that's, that's to me. I do it because I enjoy serving. I want to do better every time. So. Right. Right. Well, you know, I think that's one of the reasons I was put here on this earth. Mm -hmm. Everything led me to this podcast. Everything led me to it, you know. So here I am and, and there you are serving in your way as well. And I'm so happy our paths crossed. I am too. So listeners, it's time to say farewell. Wherever you are in the world, just take care of yourself. Self-care is so important in grief, whether you're a man or a woman. Please take care of yourselves. Make good choices and reach out to somebody close to you that you feel might be able to help you and support you in your grief. Other than that, I hope you tune in again next week. Take care, stay well, happy holidays, and be safe as we all continue to live in grief. Thank you so much for listening with us today. Do you have a topic that you'd like us to cover or do you have a question from one of our episodes? please email us at info at asiliveandgrieve.com and let us know. We hope you will find a moment to leave a review, send an email, and share with others. Join us next time as we continue to live and grieve together.